Mr. Sawyer, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. I'm Jerry Vassilatos from Chicago Corner. We broadcast on chicagocorner.tv. Um, so I know your your uh, your colleague, Tony Boylan, we actually worked on some previous mayoral campaigns. Yeah, yeah, good man. You're in good hands with him. So here's a, here's a key question, because we do understand you're really uh, very, very focused on police reform. We at Chicago Corner are too. Two main questions that I have that we've been talking about on our program. Number one, how do you feel about the concept of putting into legislation or law police officers being required to live in their communities so that the people that they're policing are their neighbors? They don't look at them as uh, unknown faces. And I think we think that that type of a uh, proposal for the police department brings I, I bridges the gap between the police and the citizens in, in the community better. Now, obviously, that's not an easy thing to institute, but we feel that like bringing the community together with the police so we don't always have this issue of the police fearing for their lives, not knowing who they're going out and, and helping or policing. What do you think of that type of a concept and, and how to possibly integrate something like that? A couple of One of the things, I don't think we should legislate it. We should encourage it and we should provide incentives for that. I don't think that, I think it'll work in reverse if we try to enforce it by ordinance. I think that would be problematic. But I do encourage officers living in the communities where they serve, living in areas, not just the, the skirt, the, uh, the edge of the city of Chicago, where most of our police officers tend to live, but in, in the actual heart of the city, in, in, in police districts where they work, police districts where they, they are making a difference. I think that they should be there. We should offer housing incentives. And I know that worked for a while, but we abandoned it many years ago. We should relook at that uh, in, in your regard. Incentives would feel like a good way to promote it because if you don't enforce it, how do you get them to actually step up? Because we also feel that the fraternal order of police kind of has an attitude. It's like them against us. And that's, I, and that's and that should not be the case. Absolutely. I say this with all respect to law enforcement. We talked about this on our show all the time. I, I, I want law enforcement in Chicago to live up to the ideal we all expect it to be. But as you know, and as we've seen, there have been so many scandals, so much abuse. We want to see CPD aspire to be better. So when we talk about how they can, you know, live amongst the community that they're actually policing. We just feel from that perspective, it, it unites people more than divides them. So I, I, I think your proposal of like offering housing incentives does make sense. But I, you know, as far as enforcing it. Yeah, I think we're forcing you will, will provide a reverse effect. It'll feel that we're, it is a us against them kind of attitude. And I don't want us to have that and to continue to have that. Police are our partners. We need police in our neighborhoods. We need police in the city of Chicago. And I support the police department. I support our rank and file officers. I want to make sure that we do this. That's why I've been a part of so many things as it relates to police reform. I obviously know that I, I was the one that created, that was well, part of creating the, the new uh, offices that we have now, the district councils. That was my ordinance that I worked on for almost seven years. So I'm very proud of that. And I want to make sure that we do more to encourage community and police relations. In order for us to fight crime, it takes everyone to be involved, not just the police, not just the community. Working together is what makes it happen because we cannot find out who's causing or committing crimes without engaging the communities where they live and work and making sure that they know that they can be trusted with good information and they won't be cast aside or they won't be targeted once that information gets to them. So we want to make sure that relationship stays strong and, and we continue to foster that to make sure that we can catch the bad guys, get them before a trial judge and get them a judge so that we can have safer communities. Another tough question, and it's not a gotcha, but it's, it's something we've talked about a lot also. Medical doctors, attorneys, other professionals are required to carry liability insurance. Why is there such a, uh, there seems to be a, a resistance to CPD either having police officers and everyone in law enforcement carry liability insurance to cover these unfortunate lawsuits we see that come out of taxpayers' pockets, or if you don't want to carry the insurance for a possible liability with an abuse issue, it comes out of your pension. Because, you know, that would also keep people account. I think we think it would keep people accountable because if you like have some teeth in something, I know it's a tough question. And I, we, no, it's, it's not, a, it's not, it's not, it's not being anti-law enforcement. It's, it's, it's accountability. It's not a tough question at all. Okay. I supported this for years now. Okay. I've been trying to work on, but maybe a little modification of what you're doing. I, I, I what, what you're talking about, what, what you're proposing. I'm a lawyer by trade. Okay. When I practice, I have to carry liability insurance. So I, I and, 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 and when you have officers that are providing a very serious service to our citizens, I think that we should have a level of what they call reinsurance 
you know, zero zero liability to, to X should be covered by the officer. X plus one to whatever should be covered by the city. So we can have a reasonable amount, you know, that first say the first two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm just making your number up, so don't hold me to it. Say the first say the first two hundred fifty thousand dollars is covered by the officer's policy that he covers, which could be nominal. It could be part of his union dues, or you could make it part of the dues that they pay. And anything over that, the city pays. I think that's a fair compromise, and I think it's something we should be looking at very seriously. It's a step in the right direction. So um, I, I don't know who else. Uh, is Kit nearby? Do we, I don't know. Okay, we've got a little time. Kit, is there someone else waiting? Okay, so we have some more time to talk. So and, uh, Mayor Lightfoot's not here tonight. I don't know if she was invited or not, but if she was invited. Do you know if she was invited? Or not? I have no idea okay. at all. It's interesting she's not here. All right, let me shift into something else. Um, we on Chicago Corner have compiled what we irreverently call the Chicago Corner Manifesto. <laughs> it's meant to unite north to south, east to west. Actually, what this is, it's a compilation of very, very important issues from all of our viewers of Chicago Corner, uh, ranging from infrastructure to mental health clinics to police reform to environmental uh, racism. We ask all candidates not to do this tonight, but I want to give you, it's only four pages. Take it with you. Read through it. My email is on there. If you can respond, if you agree to some of these issues or how you might uh, propose uh, reforming or addressing these issues, email it to me. And we'd love to have you on the show to talk more. We live stream Tuesdays and Fridays to maybe perhaps talk about your response to the Chicago Corner Manifesto. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely.